What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to the next video. This is a word problem. We're still dealing with factoring. And this particular word problem, very similar to one we did in the previous section. The only difference is the type of function we're gonna be dealing with to model the height in relation to time of a ball being thrown off a roof. And in the previous section, we were dealing with quadratics where that A value was one. Now we're dealing with quadratics where that A value is not one, something other than one. And so that's what's gonna be the difference in this particular question. So let's see what we're dealing with. A ball is thrown off a roof and its height is modeled by H equals negative two T squared plus 11 T plus 21 where h is in meters and t is in seconds. We have to find the height of the roof, the max height of the ball, the time it reaches the max height, the time it hits the ground, and then the valid values for h and t. So first thing I would recommend doing is taking this quadratic and just graphing it getting a bunch of characteristics. So you could even think of this quadratic not even related to a word problem, just pretend you're just working with this and you're asked to graph it. And then once we have the graph with all the different characteristics, then it's gonna be a lot easier to answer the questions. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna factor that because that will give us the t-intercepts. And so notice between negative two, 11 and 21, can't take out any full numbers, but we could definitely take out a negative one because the leading coefficient is negative. So we'll end up with, this will be minus 11t, and then we'll have minus 21 like that. Okay, and then from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite this quadratic over here, and then I'm gonna see, can we factor this? So we'll have an A value of two, a B value of negative 11, a C value of negative 21. What's the AC value gonna be? It's gonna be two times negative 21, which would give us negative 42. Find two numbers that multiply to negative 42, add up to negative 11. So that would be what? Negative 14 and positive three, negative 14, positive three. Negative 14 times three gives us negative 42. Negative 14 plus three gives us negative 11. And so what we would do is we would decompose that middle term into those two terms right there. And from these two, we could take out a two T, we'd be left with T minus seven. And then from these two, we could take out a three and we'd be left with t minus seven. So then we could take out the t minus seven and we're left with a two t plus three, like that, right? So we took this bracket, factored it into those two brackets. And then once we have that, let me actually just write it at the very top, we can create a pretty detailed uh, graph. So let's erase all of this over here. And let's get some characteristics for the graph. Now I know that the graph's not gonna look like this because time can't be negative, but when we're just initially graphing the actual quadratic, I'm gonna put this negative portion just because one of the intercepts are gonna be negative. And then from there we can adjust for the valid values for this particular problem. So over here, we got the time. Here we have the height. Now, a couple of things. Notice that at a time of zero, if we plug in zero for T, we'll have a height of 21. So when the ball is thrown off the roof, it's starting at a height of 21. So that's zero and 21 right there. And so what's gonna happen is it's gonna go like that, right? And then over here, again, there's gonna be a negative intercept and we'll erase that after, but we're actually gonna use that negative intercept in addition to the positive intercept to find this max value over here because the max value is gonna be between those intercepts. So how can we find these two intercepts here? Well, it's easy because we factored it. So we just have to find when is the height gonna be zero. So we could just plug in, let's do it over here actually. We could plug in zero for this entire thing. 
And so from here, we could see when is t minus 7 going to be 0, when is 2t plus 3 going to be 0, and then when we isolate for the t value, it would happen at a t value of 7 over here, so that's positive 7. Over here, we'll have 2t equals negative 3, divide both sides by 2, so t would be negative 3 over 2. And let's actually just work with decimals here in this particular case, so we'll have a t value of negative 1.5. So that's where this intercept is coming in. We got negative 1.5, and then this intercept is the positive 7, like that. So again, we're going to end up erasing this, but I'm going to use this intercept, in addition with this one, to find what first that axis of symmetry is, right? Because now what we want to do is we want to try to find the coordinate of that vertex, because notice that they're asking for the max height of the ball and also the time the time it reaches that max height. So we're looking for this time over here. So what we can do is um, first we could find this t value, the axis of symmetry or the t value of the vertex. So we can add these two intercepts. Remember, how do we do that? We add the intercepts and then we divide by two. It's basically the midpoint of the intercept. So it would be 5.5 divided by two which would give us 2.75. So over here, this is going to be 2.75 seconds, and that's going to be this coordinate, 2.75, right? The t value of the vertex, and that's actually the answer to part c. That's the time it's going to reach the max height. And then if we want to find the actual height here of this vertex, right, this value, what we can do is we could take that 2.75 we could plug it into either of these equations. Let's actually plug it into the factored one. You could, fact, uh, you could plug it into um, the expanded one for t as well, the 2.75 for t. You should get the same value. I'll plug it into this factored one. So we'll have 2 times 2.75 plus 3. And we'd end up with a negative. There's like a negative 1 over here. 2.75 minus 7 would give us negative 4.25. And then over here, we'll have 2 times 2.75, which gives us 5.5 plus 3, which would give us 8.5 like that. And then if you multiply all of these, you'd end up with 36.125. So that ends up being the h value of the vertex right there. And now we have enough information to answer all of these questions. We have a pretty specific graph. Now, again, we don't want to have this part of the graph because time can't be negative, right? So according to this word problem, that's all we're going to be looking at. But we had to use that negative intercept before in order to find this 2.75. So that's why I recommend just taking a quad, the quadratic in abstract form, graphing it fully, and then once you have all of the characteristics, then you can adjust your graph according to the problem. And now we could pretty much go through all these. So what's the height of the roof? Well, it's over here where the ball was thrown up from 21 meters and then the ball goes up to here. So the max height of the ball is 36.125 meters. The time it reaches the max height, 2.75 seconds. When does it hit the ground? It hits the ground over here, and that's going to happen at 7 seconds. That's one of the intercepts we found. And then we have to state the valid values for H and T. Right, because we're dealing with a word problem, so we're only looking at this part right here of this quadratic. So there are limits on the h values, right? The h values can't be negative, it can also be above that. There's limit for the t values, the t values go from zero to seven. So for the um, let's start with the t value. So the t value it can be between zero and seven seconds. Right? Those are the valid values for t. Now, if you want to put this in set notation, you could say t is an element of real numbers, and it's between 0 and 7 seconds like that. Right? So that's another notation. If you're not doing this notation in your class, don't worry about it. 
most teachers in grade 10 are just going to use that right there. And then for H, what are the valid values? Well, notice that for H, it could be zero. The max it could be is 36.125. So H, the valid values are from zero to 36.125. And if you want to put in set notation, basically means H can be anything, any, any number, as long as it's between zero and 36.125. And it's inclusive of those because it does reach that max height. It does hit the ground at seven seconds. So you want to make sure you put a less than or equal to sign right there. Right, and that's pretty much it. So do the graph and then go through and answer the question.